the end of the season is fast approaching and you know you're going to have to rebuild that squad. But what are some of the tips that I use to get the best squad I can ready for the next season? What's up everyone? How's it going? So this is a little follow up from the video we did previously that went down really well. And I'm buzzing with that because it was 24 minutes. So if you sat through that, you are my hero. Now, one of the main parts about it was building your squad ready for the next season. And that's what we're going to focus on today. Now, I'm in a big long-term save with AC Amacina over on Twitch and we've just finished season two. Now, season three is going to be a bit of a brute and we had some serious work to do. All right, what we have here on screen just up there is the formation that my Messina boys have been using. Now, if you followed the last video, you'll know that when I get to the end of the season, I take out players that are not going to be there for one reason or another out of the starting 11. So I know what to focus on. I know what positions I need to sign. Now, this is in my Discord. In my Discord with my Patrons, they have a bit of banter with my AC and Messina because I said, this is what I've got to work with this season, boys. And yes, as you can see there, we've got one, two, three, Four players, which means seven massive gaps. Bit of a problem, right? So we have to start to build it. So how have I gone from what I just showed you to that? A brand new spanking starting 11 with seven or eight new players in it. At the end of the season, my squad was looking like that. You can see there the bottom one, two, three, six were grayed out players, meaning the game took pity on me. We had that little amount in the squad. who threw us some players to give us a bone. So squad building was about to commence. So on the previous video, we deep dived into the data hub, didn't we? And we noticed that we had a problem with our tackling, defensive work in midfield. So I knew I had to get some better midfielders with work rate in mind for them central midfield positions. So the first thing you do, the first thing you do is you go to the players you want to replace and work out why you want to replace them. So one of the midfielders we focused on was Alberto Di Francesco. Now a good all round midfielder, not too bad at first look but in our formation we're only playing three in the middle i need work rate i need tackling and what we worked out was that francesco using the data hub wasn't doing a great job defensively and if you look a bit closer his tackling is only eight his marking is only six his positioning is good but it just wasn't quite good enough so he's a template of what i needed to improve on well, the first bit probably isn't rocket science to you i literally go up to edit search here we go into position row so i've got midfielder there and I'm going to pick out some attributes that I know that Di Francesco was lacking on tackling marking but I want him as an all-round midfielder still so we're still going to pluck and pick some of the attributes that go in that role and it's no surprise when no player comes up because remember your attributes start at 15 so we're going to drop them down slowly until players start to creep up onto the list but just remember when you put a load of attributes in so in there I think I've put six I put six I'm searching for things like tackling marking passing vision I want it all basically you're not going to get a big long list look at that we've got one so if you want a more extensive list you've just got to slim them down a bit take some out like this up to match and then you can match two out of six three out of six we'll start with four out of six there we go and you can see now we've got a bigger list to work from it's brought up some interesting players for our level you know I mean look at this Alfie McCallman has somehow managed to find himself at Torino but his all-round attributes, he might do a job for us, but as I look closer, it's a similar issue to what we had with Di Francesco. His tackling isn't great, and his marking's not great, so it's not going to be a massive upgrade. So it's easy to get seduced by players who look better, but you need to really remember why you're looking for them. I'm looking for a more aggressive defensive midfielder, so we'll get him off. And the next one we find is Nicola Pavan. Now, this looks like a more appealing option to us. If you look at his marking there, it's at 11 in double figures. His tackling is 13, his positioning is good. He looks like an all-round better defensive midfielder now that's the easy way to do it linking your data hub findings to your player search going by attributes but there's another way that i'd use and i've started to use it recently and i'm starting to love it and it is again using the data hub but in the player search if you're only going to watch one thing this video watch this bit now for this i've just flipped it over to my real social dad save because it's at the end of the season that's a prime time to do it the messina was at the start of the new season but this one is where it's at because you need the stats from that season. So let's go to player search. So here we are in player search and here we can really get granular down in detail when you're looking for the ideal player. Let's assume that we're looking for a new target forward and we want him to dominate in the air. Normally you would just go to your heading, your jump and reach and your attribute search like we just did. However, if you want to take it a step further, you can use the data that's been collected to see if you can get the ideal man. Let's go. 
what we'll do on the scouting screen here we are we'll go down to add condition down here we'll knock it down they'll come up there all the ones you're familiar with but one that's not used much i know people are aware of it but not a lot of people do bother to use it is stats and chalkboard now this is all the stats from throughout the season like the ones that are collated in the data hub now we're looking for a target man so we want him to dominate in the air we're going to go to aerial challenges we're going to go to headers one over the entire season now it starts at zero not a great benchmark right but let's start it at the ultimate benchmark of 500 up it goes to 500 and now we've got a shortlist of players that are regularly winning headers in the air the beasts these players here have all won at least 500 headers 500 headers throughout the season i mean that's some serious work on the old noggin now if i'm looking for a target forward straight up we've got center backs who you expect to be up there but we've got two lads here who are winning an absolute girth of headers so let's have a look at him guido carillo now it's not hard to see why he's won them headers and this is why i like looking at that stat board because it points you to the players there's going to be quite a few players with heading 18 jumping reach 18 who are tall but are they doing it? Are they winning the headers? This man is winning the headers, and when you click on him, you get a nice surprise because he's got heading 18, jumping reach 18, his strength is 15, he's 191 centimeters. Ladies and gentlemen, you've just found the perfect target man. But if you're still not convinced, you can take it a stage further to really find your ideal player. So I'm gonna take my head away now because I'm gonna add to that chalkboard search. So what I've added now is not only we've got headers won at 500, I've added headers won ratio in. Now no one's going to win 100% of 500 plus headers are there. So we'll slowly drop that down and we'll see what turns up. So we're at 100 so far. Let's drop it to 99. You get the picture, but we'll drop it down in tens. 90%. Still nobody. We'll drop it down to 80%. Now this is getting impressive now. And you can see the first four that come up are centre backs. So that's no good to us. Kind of expected because it's a centre back's duty. Go drop it down to 70%. And bang. Now you can see the man who came up first, Guido Carrillo, has turned up here. Not only has he won 500 headers, he's won 70% of the headers he's gone up for. At least you can even take it a step further. We're moving up in singles now, all the way up to 75%. So basically, he's going to win three out of four of your headers. The only target forward on the entire list so if you're looking for a target forward you now know these got to be your top priority right still not convinced he's a striker maybe you want shots on target now we're getting even more detailed so it starts at 100 no striker is gonna have 100 shots on target so let's drop it down to 50 percent i want 50 percent of shots on target by my striker let's have a look 50 percent bang there he is guido carillo he's the only one who's got all three of these in his favor is he actually even better than that let's go up to 60 there he is. Now we're talking about a proper baller. 70, not quite. We'll drop it down in singles. There he is, 61%. So now I am pretty convinced that if I was to make a move for this man, he's going to bag me some serious goals. And you know, you can do that for all sorts. It all depends how detailed and how furry you want to be. There's all sorts on that chalkboard you can search for from aerial challenges, from crosses, passes. So you're looking at key passes. If you're looking for a playmaker, I 100% 100% advise you to dive on this and get the ideal player for you. If I want a striker now, a target man, I know that this guy is going to be as good as he gets for us. So that's what I did with Messina. As much as possible, I got the best players I could do. And I wasn't always going to get a player like Guido Carrillo, the ideal target man, in fact. Someone buy him and let me know what he's like. But we've built a team now based on chalkboard, based on data hub, based on my technique of taking players out of this formation so I know what roles to look for. I've built myself a team. I'm ready for the new season. Now listen, it takes a bit of time, so if you're not into the detailed side of the game, you might want to skip this video completely. But if you're into the down and dirty details and you want to get the very best team you can, trust yourself, get into that player search, use the data hub, get them all combined, and you'll get yourself a good team. I've managed to get myself some proper balls in here, massive upgrades from what I was using last season. Anyone in the stream will know I had massive issues at centre-back. Now I've got myself two brand new ones, full of height with jumping reach, who last season were great in the air, and we've got a better chance. Now, I hope you found that helpful. There's going to be questions on this, no doubt. Those who have used the stat chalkboard in previous versions, let me know how you found it. I'm pretty new to it myself, so I'm well happy that I found it because I'm into the details, you can probably imagine. It opens up a whole world in that player search, really getting to grips and down into the detail on what player's going to be right for your club.